your headphones, okay? Uh, they got it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> they got it? Uh, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you want to laugh at me, you can. <laughs> Especially on air. <laughs> All right. You ready to yeah. light this chicken? Yeah, let's light this chicken off. <laughs> And now for something special. The unit is self-contained with its own saddler, farrier, wheelwright, and so on. It's a rigorous training dished on who know all there is to know about horses, and it brings results. We take you behind the scenes now to show just some of the interesting aspects of this training. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein, the award-winning number one podcast for great sound of horses from the ground up. Mike Stein is a registered journeyman ferry with an APF1 accreditation. On this week's show, Talking Terminology, we're going to talk about the HL zone, also known as the Horn Lemonier zone. We're also going to talk about how deer corn could be dangerous to horses or not, and a mare foal feeding causes movement issues. All this and much more will be discussed here on Equine, Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. And over to my far right side is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. You said you were doing horrible when we were talking before we got on the air. A lot. <laughs> now you're doing just fine? I am wonderful. I'm getting to hang out with you. Oh, well, thank you very much. How much, much. better can it be, right? Well, I mean, when we first started, I'm like, oh, well, Mike, how, what's going on? You know, you're doing all right? We kinda, oh, we were talking about the new swimming pool, right? Yeah. You said you got a new swimming pool. I said, well, you got to be happy about a new well, swimming I pool. Well, i what I'd be willing to do, talking about that new swimming pool. Uh-huh. I will, I'd be willing to pay you double what you're worth <laughs> if you'll be the first one to go dive in head first here, here you go no, there's my quarter actually it's two nickels two nickels i rub them together I know i'm overpaying you but you know oh geez no i would not <laughs> dive in your swimming pool what happened mike uh the 1972 septic tank decided it wanted to be a hole in the ground so now we're getting ready to dig and so you're like the clampus with like a little duck pond on the back exactly exactly <laughs> you're fitting right in mike fitting right in so what are you but gonna i mean so the lid fell into the tank yeah she's 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 old she's tired she's like me yeah well, but uh hopefully yeah, your lid's getting lined up to get that straightened out here in the next few days oh just slap a two by four on it or, or a piece of plywood and say hey don't go over that area yeah yeah that's it i mean you're out in the middle of nowhere anyway so you're not like you got people uh, you know selling uh you know uh literature and knocking on your door and asking you you know come to the side of whatever religion that they're, they're trying to get you on you don't have a whole bunch of foot traffic over there well no but we've already got locates lined up and equ equipment lined up and the county lined up and all that sounds stuff. expensive mike sounds expensive you gotta do something for entertainment right yeah, all right what else you got going on anything well um archie archie i don't know who archie is you don't know archie uh-uh it's a cartoon character okay yeah yeah no actually archie is a horse okay uh archie did good a couple of weeks ago and he will be going to the land rover who's oh now hold on you just can't say hey, you know archie no you know, oh well he's going you don't to know the archie land. i know archie <laughs> give me a little background on who remember, archie is remember our friend christy forceman yes all right archie is one of one of the horses that she ha she owns uh -huh. and uh and it in one of the one of the many in her training program and he did well and he's qualified to go to the land rover at four star and when's the land rover it is next year in the spring and how old how old of a horse is, is archie about roundabout you want my guess <laughs> no i want you to call archie up ask him when he was born Okay, I will. I will. I, I for some reason nine pops in my head, but okay. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you could um, when he I could be older, Mike. When I say about the age of a horse, I'm not looking for actual you know time, date, and month that he was actually born. I, I just he is a matured horse, and he is but see, I don't, athletic. But see, I don't understand. I mean, not that I don't understand. I know the ages of horses. I don't know how long a horse lives. And I don't know what a, you know, I know what a yearling is. After a yearling, I don't know what that is. So if you say, well, he's between five and eight. I'm like, oh, well, okay, I can relate to five and eight. But when you say he's like 16 and, and 19. He's or, between one and 25. No, don't say it like that because I'm between one and 25. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, when you, when I ask those questions as far as, you know, what's the age of a horse when it, you know, so he, Archie's going to this event. I'm thinking in my head. I'm trying to relate that to humans. So, right. for example, when you watch the Olympics this past Winter Olympics, and you see these, the, some of the gymnasts are like 32, 33 years old, and you're like going, wow, 
in your mind, you're like, that's really old to be a gymnast. But when you look at like basketball players and stuff, you see them, you know, they're 28, 29, 30. You're like going, well, that's about the average age of a, a basketball player, like NBA basketball player. Right. Um, not college basketball player. That'd be a different story. So when I ask you, like, what's the age of this horse? That's kind of where I'm, I'm leading that question to. Like, is it's he, within it, the regulations that FAI permits and allows and uh, all that sort of stuff. And, you know. And uh, Archie doesn't care. He's just hanging out. He, well, he does care because he's, he, you know, I, I know people say this, believe it or not, you know, horses need a job. And Archie's probably really proud of his job. And he gets excited, um, you know, to get out there and perform. And he knows. You know, the one thing that Archie he knows he's really likes the most in this world. Eating. Eating. I guess. He likes eating. He's good at eating. But I mean, you know, uh, just a, a personal example, my wife came back from her thing. I know I keep beating this into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, she knows that Diego knows that he's out there to perform. This is where I get to show off all my moves in front of, look at all these people watching me move. You know, Archie's got to be the same way or any horse when they're going into an event or something like that. Right. They know there's something in their mind where it clicks and they go, I'm in the middle of all these people and they're not scared. I he's, see, hoping, he's hoping he gets one of those big screen TV moments. Yeah, where they, they put him up there and he's like, he won, you know, best of show or whatever right, the, yeah. the, the thing that they win at the Land Rover. What do they win at the Land Rover? And what kind of competition is the Land Rover? Let's the, Land, the Land Rover used to be the Rolex. And to most of us that have been out there, it will always be the Rolex. And it is a three-day event that they have at the horse park in Kentucky. So it's it's dressage. And you have to and the, Yeah. It's dressage and then. Show jumping. And, and then, then cross country. And then cross country. Okay. And then. Uh, you know, Archie will be doing showing, all three, showing his stuff. Now, well, call me crazy or call me naive. Okay. Uh, is it the same rider on all three events, or is it the? It will be the horse rider team. Yes. So one person could do dressage, another person could do the horse jumping. No, 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 no. no. Okay, so it'll be one person. One person will do the dressage. That same one person will do the show jumping, okay. and that same one person will do. The cross country. I, I didn't know if it with was with that same, with the same Archie. There's not multiple Archies. There's one Archie. Well, yeah, I know there's one Archie, but, but Archie I, does it all. But I didn't know if there was a, like you've got the you know New York Mets, right? And you've got the whole team that plays the baseball, right? Archie is the one he's horse the rock star. He's the rock star. I didn't know if they would put one person on it that would be really good at dressage, and then another person on it to do the show jumping, and another person on them to do the the eventing the long distance running or whatever yeah it's called. yeah they uh know it it will be the same horse and rider all right team. well see that's something i didn't know i'm sure there's someone out there that would probably ask that same question and they are in the same bus that i go to school in right all right it's so the short one <laughs> it is the short one no 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 a quest for knowledge is always uh looked at as far as uh a no no you're correct all right all right all right, all right so uh we're going to take a quick little break, and when we come back, we're going to start the show with talking terminology. We're going to talk about the HL zone, which is also called the horn lemonier zone, another uh, continuing uh, definition of hush, hoof measurements term. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. Greetings. This is Julia Fisher, Secretary of the South Carolina Horse Council, reaching out to urge you to join your South Carolina State Horse Council. The South Carolina Horse Council is the only statewide, all-volunteer, 501c3 organization that works for the benefit of the equine industry in South Carolina. Our mission is to connect, communicate, and educate. The South Carolina Horse Council represents all breeds, riding styles, and activity preferences. The council works to serve the horse community in a myriad of ways. For example, we help to educate our members, our elected officials, and the general public about the benefits of equestrian activities. South Carolina Horse Council holds clinics throughout the state on topics such as horsemanship, pasture management, equine nutrition, lameness, trailer safety, and barn management. Are you a member yet? Visit schorsecouncil.com. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. If you have a question for Mike Sign, make sure you get those questions into him. And the way you do that is go over to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page, it says contact us. Uh, fill out that little form. Make sure you put a physical return address in there, and we'll send you out some of a uh, free swag. We had some keychains, some magnets, some stickers. Uh, still waiting on those beer koozies to come in, but I've hounded them a couple times. I'm like, look, what ink do you need? And <laughs> I will mail it out to you. He said it's already in route. It comes from from China or something like that. So it's got to go through customs. So he's he's 
he's behind schedules on printing those as well. And right now, uh, joining us here in the studio behind uh, his own schedule is Mike Stein. How are you? What schedule is that? I don't know. Michael. One that I'm behind. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so... Talking terminology. Uh, this is part of the show. If you uh, are not familiar with uh, certain aspects as far as terms that are being used in the barn by your vet, by your farrier, by your trainer, or anything like that, and you're not, uh, not that you're scared to ask, but you just need the exact solid definition, we kind of break these down for you in a section that we like to call talking terminology. And this week, we're going to talk about the continuing definition of another hoof measurement term called the HL zone or the horn laminar, laminar zone. And you said also, Mike, what was it also called or can be referred to? Uh, the typically, you'd fair, uh, or I would call it the lamina. So the lamini zone. Okay, so laminar, laminar, lamina. I don't, you know. So what are we talking? That part of the foot, the sensitive, the sensitive part of the lamina. So when, and when you got the hoof horn side of it also. Okay, so when we talk about that, when you hear that in the barn, what are we actually referring to, Mike? The HL zone or the horn laminar zone? Okay. When you're Am looking, I, well, hold on, hold on. Am I switching cameras? Yes, you're switching <laughs> cameras. You gotta let me know. You gotta catch up, Travis. Sorry, it's the first. I thought th I thought you knew what was going on here. First day on the planet, dear. That's right. Uh, hold on, let me also flip this around. Sorry, I forgot to do this when we were doing it earlier. There you go. Mm. Uh, and don't forget, for every podcast uh, we have, we also have a matching video over on YouTube. It's getting a lot of views over there, so uh, so you can see these in real time as Mike's talking about them here. Uh, and if um, if you'd like to give them a subscribe over there, you can do that as well. All right, Mike, so we're looking at this foot that you've been working on here, this picture right, of this Picasso. Right. I think we're going to, at the end of the season... We're going to sell it for I, millions of dollars. At the end of this year's season. Or those two nickels. Yeah, and uh, we'll put it up on the, on the Facebook page, and you can see it as well. So what are we looking at here, Mike? Okay, this is a cross-section of hoof. You have the hoof horn and then the lamina between the hoof wall hoof horn and the front of the coffin bone and this is where you know you when you get inflammation problems that 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 lamina will swell and expand so the hl zone would be this distance at just below the extensor process and the other place you would measure would be here at the tip tip of the coffin bone right okay and one thing you would be looking at is, does this expand out? And this should be, on a healthy hoof, a good clean measurement to the ground should be, be even. Pretty, pretty even there, yeah. So if one side's five, or if the top's five millimeters, the bottom should be five millimeters as well. Yeah, it's going to be more than that. Okay, I'm just throwing a number uh, out there. That's a good number. Be an awful thin hoof wall. But... You know, if you take your average riding horse and, you know, a young horse might be 15, 15 mils there, can't expand out as they get a little older. On a big horse, it might be a little bit different. And this is all done with taking x-rays. Take, take the an only way you can do this is get x-rays. Right. And to get accurate measurements, there's a calibration tool you can put in with your x-rays. Okay. And without that, you cannot get an accurate measurement. There are units that are set up to take care of that for you at this point it used to be on film you knew it was about an 8 to 12 magnification to the film itself so you kind of figured about 10 percent magnification when you did your measurements on your film and some of us worked on film and worked on plenty of it but the you know the the lamina zone if that is expanded when you get a lot of information it pushes this back so so you you're on an average riding horse, say you got 20 mils. If you got, is is a pretty good range for most of them. But if you you look at that, and all of a sudden that's 30 mils there, and that's expanded back, that tends not to recover so much. So you know later in life you can see well what we've had a good a good bout of inflammation there. It's pushed back. That that area's opened up. The lamina has some stretching to it. The other thing is down at this bottom end, if we got a hoof wall that comes out here. and your lamina line is still running even okay is that stretched lamina or stretched hoof wall and you know do we have cavities up in there and that would be where light white line would show up like you know and on the other end if your hoof wall goes out here and the lamina is stretched out at the bottom 
Well, that would that would be something that would be related more to laminitis. Uh, mechanical pressure can cause some of that, and um, so that's that's just starting to start to get part of the picture of what's going on when you shoot X rays. It and here's the definition that I have written down here. So a line drawn per, uh, perpendicular to the face of the P three, measured from the face of the P three. To the dorsal hoof capsule, as marked in the Maria. The measurements are made uh, to the sensory po- processor uh, at the just dis- below the extensor processor, yep. And the distal. Uh, the HL includes both the horn, the epidermis, and the lamini, the dermis. Right. And then both are uh, proximal and dist- distal measurements should be the same. Right. And hopefully, there has been, there is a you know, a paste that you can put on that will be seen with the seen on your x-rays so you can get an accurate measurement because part of what happens is if you look at the hoof wall when you get closer and closer and closer you know if you're shooting here with your x-ray unit mm-hmm. and this gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and this last little bit will kind of burn out on the film so if you run that paste down here, it's kind of like a block set slightly off of the hoof wall. A lot of times it will appear in the x-ray. So if you're measuring without the paste, you've burned out some of the hoof wall and how accurate can you be? You can't, if you can't see the whole thing and you can mark, you know, you can clearly see your coordinator band, any weird defects in the wall and all that, because the, the paste will show that up for you. Well, cool. Yes. <laughs> Very good. All right, we're going to take a quick is little break. Is that okay? That is perfect. And uh, we're going to take a quick little break and come back, and we're going to talk about deer corn. Is it dangerous for horses or not? And Mike's got a little story to, to get into what he came across uh, the other day. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. Greetings again from the South Carolina Horse Council. Our horse welfare programs offer small grants to equine owners who are struggling financially for specific veterinary bills. First, our Stallions to Geldings funding acknowledges the benefits of gelding your animal, and once the application is attested to by the vet and approved, it provides direct payments to your vet for gelding services. This is an important resource and has been able to assure that hundreds of equines in the state, horses, donkeys, and mules, have received quality care. Our euthanasia program helps with final arrangements for those owners who may be struggling with end of life arrangements for their equine partners and lack adequate resources. Funds do not cover disposal, but once again, once approved, can provide direct to the vet payments for managing euthanasia expenses. Are you a member yet? Visit schorsecouncil.com. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. Make sure you follow him over on Facebook and all the stuff that you see here in the studio. Uh, Mike has a whole bunch of articles that he posts as well. Uh, very interesting. If you want to further your education, your equine knowledge as far as creating sound horses from the ground up, go over to Facebook, search Equine Dynamics Mike Stein, and uh, give him a little subscribe over there. And Mike's posting stuff all the time. You know, one thing that I've noticed, Mike, over to my far inside is Mike Stein, right. by the way. One thing that I've noticed all the time, and I was laying in bed thinking about you, <laughs> thinking about the show. Okay, sh- let's th- th- think about this for a minute. Oh, I was laying in bed. I was thinking about the show, and I was thinking about like actually your Facebook page, because I was on Facebook, and I, I came across one of your articles, and you post Secretariat on there all the time. Right. In your opinion, with all the stuff that you've been posting and everything, is Secretariat your number one is that is that your role model for horses because you post so much stuff about well, secretary and how not that you're a i don't want to say a fan i'm sure you're a fan of secretary in itself but everything that secretariat has is done right from all everything that i see that you post on there now you're not posting it every day it's not mike stein and secretary right. on facebook but you everything when you show examples of stuff and you're talking about things on your Facebook page, you always refer back to Secretariat as far as the wingspan or, or the, the stretch, the stride. Well, of a, he had a huge stride, for sure. And then everything else, you kind of lean on Secretariat as being almost the perfect horse. He was, uh, he was something special, for sure. Um, in, a, in a lot of aspects, he was, he was an incredible horse, no doubt about it. Uh, part of the reason that I post so much secretariat stuff, you know that a lot of what changed the course of what I do as far as being a farrier, because I could nail a shoe on to keep it tight, right? Mm-hmm. I was good. It didn't fall off. Right. <laughs> and the out. horse walked away just fine. Sure. It did. But, uh, 
the mare I had as a teenager, I lost her to laminitis. Um, I was shooting part-time, had been for a while, and she got into laminitis. I called in people to help me that were not as, they were more educated than I was, but not that much necessarily. Didn't know any better. And, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a lineman and also, but, uh, prior to being a farrier, prior to be a farrier, working part-time as a farrier, full-time as a, as a line tech. But, uh, she got into laminitis and, uh, you know, did everything we thought we were doing right. And I found out there was a lot of stuff later that I wish I'd known then, but then later on, uh, dur during this process, Hugo blasted through here like a hurricane and I went to work 24 seven with that. And on October 4th, she was put down due to laminitis the same day that her secretary was put down to laminitis. Oh, okay. So I see the on connection. the exact same morning. I see the connection there somewhat. Okay. So, so, so that's your, that's your, I mean, that's part of your connection with, with, uh, posting so much about, uh, you know, about, about secretary. Yes. What about sea biscuit? Do you ever know nothing about sea biscuit? I don't know that much about sea biscuit, <laughs> but he was a, he was an interesting little dude too. You okay. know, I mean, he, was, he I, I haven't seen a lot of heart. Have I seen the movie Secretariat? Is there a movie called secretary? There's a secretary. Yeah, movie. Yeah, you but need was, to watch it. Was it made in like the sixties? When was it made? No, because Secretariat ran, ran in seventy three. Okay, so all right, but there had, but you know, you could have made it in the sixties, but you'd have been, uh, you know, <laughs> of your you'd time. have to have psychic powers. <laughs> all right, uh, so getting into psychic powers, <clears throat> Mike, you were telling me uh, before we started the show today. You know, we have our little chit chat mm -hmm. back and forth, and just kind of catching up. And uh, you were talking about deer corn, and you know, it's getting that time of year, and right. And I know here in North Carolina, I can People hear are putting out deer feeders. Well, not only that, I can hear them like everyone in this area is starting to practice. You know, they're getting out well, the, their long barrels, their rifles, and stuff, and, and I can hear them practicing and get everything sighted in and stuff. So I know that deer season's getting here soon. Right. So you see, like Mike said, you're going to see all these little deer feeders and and things like that. Our neighbors next door, um, the prior neighbors had a deer. Uh, feeder or corn feeder out there for a long time and then my neighbors bought the place and they were like going what's this thing and i go well they, they feed uh, deer and some here. people feed deer just to feed deer right because they, they enjoy seeing them come up right right so what was the situation that you ran into well, with a, with a horse getting around a deer feeder well you know people are putting out deer feeders and be careful where they are put hopefully they're not putting put where horses can get to them because they will eat deer corn. They'll eat anything. It doesn't say, you know, they, they can't read that thing in the bag that says deer corn, so they just, well, it's, it's corn, right? Yeah. Right. And if they mess with the feeders and knock them over and break the bottoms off and all that and it dumps a lot of corn out, guess what? And we can end up with colics. We can end up with uh, some laminitic issues and all that. Because of the corn but, or just? But, well, just over grain overload. Okay. And, and corn is a high, is a high sugar. So, and, and, and that, and coming into this time of the year with us in this part of the country, people think about laminitis in the spring, but we actually have more in the fall because, well, we don't think about it as much. And metabolically, horses are changing a bit to pack on weight for the winter. If they were a wild horse, they'd put on weight, get through the winter, drop weight, and then, and then uh, pick up weight in the spring. I think I do that too. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. But, you know... Range horses, your Mustangs, all that will drop weight through the winter. They'll, they'll pack on weight. They'll they'll cycle it. With domestic horses, most of the time we never let them drop weight. And uh, you know, ranch horses out that are out on turnout, well, they they do what they do. Different deal. But there's more laminitis in the fall. And if 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 a horse is in a situation where they're eating off a deer feeder, well, there there is a much higher risk. Well, I know that there's some place, and this is all brand new to me, where they have the purple flags or the purple placards. Placards for uh, no press, no trespassing kind of deal. Yeah, well, not I think it's no hunting or no hunting. Yeah. No hunting. I mean, they could you know if there's deer across property, they got to wait till it crosses the threshold of the certain property line, and then they shoot that deer. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's like these deer crossing signs you see on the road. 
that they put up and the deer know to go to the crossing sign and cross at the crossing sign, right? Right. But um, you said that you had a horse that, that got into a deer feeder and it, it bumped, you know, because horses are inquisitive. And, sure, they're going to mess with them. And knock it over and it and found out it was like a pinata. You know, it's a food pinata like for Oh boy, yeah. And uh, one horse ran into some issues that you were not working on. You were working on a front of yours horse. Um, and they were having issues you know, without giving out any names well, first, or anything first thing, like that. Call your you know. veterinarian. Okay. Uh, deal deal with what you need to. Um, you know, if you got a colic situation, if you end up with with some inflammation or or something like that, deal with it. And uh, you know, when a horse gets into a grain overload for the next couple of weeks, you need to watch them pretty close. And if for some reason there is damage. You know, as far as what the repercussions of the damage could show up three three months later, and people don't think about that. It's like, oh, it didn't happen today, but it can it could put them into a cycle that can throw them into a tailspin. So if they were eat the corn, the deer corn today, or eat you know a grain overload today, right? How long? And, and I know this is just you know your opinion, my opinion. Um, as far today. as how long would it take for that weight to contribute to? laminitis or any kind of uh, you know an existing uh effect that they have on their feet right now well as far as the lamina breaking down it it takes longer than any other tissue in the body so it can break down a good while later and uh i kind of think in 90 day windows okay and uh you know the, the part of the deal is is they they Overload on grain, overload on grasses, your gut bacterium spikes up, and then when the food's not there, it dies off. It can send their horse, their, their system into a little, little bit of a toxic deal and set off laminitis. Um, but it's management, and uh, there are you know there are places out where somebody may have put one close enough to your property where you know some of these spreaders maybe a slinging spreading it and it may be into your horse's paddock so kind of kind of pay attention around the property to see what's going on kind of walk the fence line and stuff walk the fence line you need to anyway hopefully yeah like i did you know uh, pay attention last week to your new grasses you just planted coming in and how fast how fast they're eating it and uh weight tapes you can get from any feed dealer so kind of keep a monitor on that and and have a good idea because most of the, most of the laminitic cases out there, if you if you managed the situation, a lot of them can be avoided. I'm not going to say all of them. Sometimes some metabolic things creep up on us. A few other things, uh, and the ill, you know, horse. My the mare of mine came up with pneumonia, and that threw her into tailspin. Mm. And uh, so, just pay attention on it. The best thing to do for laminitis, people ask, what do you do for it? Prevent it. Prevent it is the absolute best thing you can do is prevention. Stay on top of it. Right. Be active with your horse. All right, guys, stick around. When we come back, we have a, a mare that has a brand new foal, and it's feeding it. And Mike wanted to show some pictures of what he actually thinks or what actually can cause movement issues in the future for this foal. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. When are you going swimming? <laughs> Not going swimming. Come on. I'll even double what I paid you. Believe it or not, <laughs> from Flor being from Florida, I don't get in the water. I I don't beach, swim pools, I don't get in the water. I don't sit so watch Jaws. <laughs> I think that's probably what scared me. <laughs> Here at the South Carolina Horse Council, our membership dues are affordably priced for individuals, families, farms, and businesses. Lifetime membership options mean you'll never have to worry about missing that annual renewal deadline to remain in good standing. Membership in the South Carolina Horse Council offers a number of important benefits. The council offers $1 million worth of personal excess liability insurance at an affordable group rate to all of our members, whether you're a resident of the state of South Carolina or not. We have compiled a trails booklet with all public trails listed and mapped within the state available to new members for free or upon request for the cost of the postage. Our website provides updates for emergency preparedness on evacuation sites for equines in the event of hurricanes, floods, or other natural disasters. Visit schorsecouncil.com. All right, you ready? Yep. 
You could become part of the food chain. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to Equine Dynamics. Did I hit it right? Yeah, there it goes. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. Um, make sure for every podcast we do, we have a matching video over on YouTube. Make sure you give them a subscribe over there on YouTube as well. And uh, in this next segment right here, we have some pictures to sh that we're going to show you. And the only way you can be a part of it visually, it just gives you a little media source to enjoy the show on a different level. And that's over on YouTube, Equine Dynamics, Mike Stein. And over to my far end side, and on his own level, is Mike Stein. How are um, you? Some level. <laughs> How are you, Mike? You doing all right? I'm doing good. Travis, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, I know you just asked me if I'm if, when am I coming over to go swimming. Well, you know what, Mike, it's a little cold out for me. Well, <laughs> I could put out some heaters. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I think I'll stay away from your pool for a little bit until you get it fixed. Yeah, well, it's, then you won't be able to go swimming swimming <laughs> it, and hopefully by then the week it's done. Oh shucks, <laughs> you you have missed your chance. I know. Um, now's your chance to go over to YouTube right now, and you're going to see this this brand new mare has a foal, and now this foal. I'm looking at the foal. It it looks like it's got a couple days on it. I mean, it's not brand new. It's not new. a brand new foal. No. no, no, no. So I'm going to switch over to camera. Let's see. Let me pull the picture up. And we can see this, and we can all see it in real time and all be friends. So here we go. This is the mama and the bait. Well, that's Mike's butt. <laughs> that's how most people know me. Uh, yeah. Do you know Mike's butt? Do you know who Mike Stein is? Hold on. Let me bend over. So here we go. We're going to camera six here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So we're looking at you're put doing shoes on Mama here. I wear suspenders so I don't look like a plumber. Yeah. Uh, so and I'm assuming this guy right here with his ears propped up, paying attention. He's learning about horse feet. And this is the fall. Right. Do you know the horses' names? That. What do you want to name them? I don't know. <laughs> Billy Bob. Uh, no, not Billy Bob. Anyways, but what kind of uh, horses are these? So people that are watching this on the video, they can get a visual in their mind. Are these um, Arabians? No, they have quarter slots on their side. Okay, so what are these? Huh? What kind of horses are these? Uh, they're quarter horse. They're oh. ran kind of ranch bred type horses. Oh, okay. So, and they've got that uh, almost gray brown coat to them, and they're solid color. And it looks like the foal here is almost like chocolate brown with a brand new blaze on his forehead. There. Right. Um, and so you're putting on shoes for this horse here, the mama. Just, just to just clean it up some feet, a little bit of a trim. Oops. Now, this is what we were talking about earlier, as far as how that that baby's got some age to it. Right. And uh, the, the 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 discussion came up. Because when this baby goes off, it always wants to go on a right lead canter. Because of, and what are we looking at here? Well, this is, this is the other part of the discussion is when this baby nurses on either side of the mare, it always brings his head to the left. No matter what side? No matter what side. Okay. There are some mares that only want a baby to nurse in a certain position. But she she nurses from either side, and always head to the left. Now, would the mama realize this, or would the mama just let the 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 full feed? Is it up to the? I guess I would say, is it up to the humans to make the horse feed from both sides, from left and right? I think it's up to the mare. Okay, more than anything, and uh, but then the question is, why always to the left? Is it something in the, you know, you know, So there's an issue that might be starting to form something, already. Something formed in the neck, the way the baby was formed in the womb, which way did it lay in the womb? Was it easier? Was it laid in the womb with the head bent to the left? Does the neck move to the same left or right? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some questions involved. If the baby always goes to the left. And if you're watching Mike on the YouTube video, he's mimicking. He's mimicking the baby and he's <laughs> twisted and all those sort of deal. What way does that twist the horse's body? Now, the horse always goes off to the right lead. If, you know, if it's constantly bending to the left, it's easier for that right, you know, in the stance, that right leg will go forward, correct? Yeah, I'm doing it too. You're doing it too. You're it's twisting like a, that way. It's like a good stretch. Though. All right. Now think about a canter. Mm -hmm. When a horse is cantering and they can, they bend their body in the canter, and when you slow them down in the canter, they might bend their body a little more as opposed to, you know, being straight. Now, the horse bends to the, bends to the left seems to be the easy way to bend. And if you look at the hind end of the horse and the shape of the rump, 
from that picture. It's not a dead on picture, but look at look at from there. You've probably got some more de development on that left hip. Leans onto the right shoulder, and uh, then you know some of the discussion that was brought up as well. Is it is the horse dumping onto the right shoulder, throwing its weight in that direction? Because there are people that will put a horse into a canter that will throw the weight uh, in certain in certain areas, as opposed to ask them to lift into it. Is it because of the, the which wh where the horse is more developed in the back end? And uh, there are situations where you put a horse into a counter bent canter to teach them to balance, which that horse, the, the baby would have a tendency in my mind to, to have a counter bent canter. So what's the combination and later on in life, how is that going to affect the performance of the horse? So the, oh, go ahead. Right. Correct. So, so the horse is already starting off on a bad foot by feeding this way at all times and not being looked at. It's, it's, it's not setting itself up for even development. And is it going to, you know, how is that going to affect it as far as working from the left to the right? And what can we do to help that, you know, help it out? So you've got the mama quarter horse here. What right. is mama, what is mama quarter horse's is job? Having babies. Okay, so it's a, it's a brood mare. She's a brood mare. I don't think she's ever seen a saddle. So, and then the baby, what do they, do they, I'm assuming they sell the babies. And what are they selling the babies to become? Well, there's a... Uh, like, do they take pride in them being dressage right. horses? Go back, go back to that front picture. Okay, hold on. There we go. Okay. That's what I was trying to look to see if there was any uneven in right. while, while you were talking. If you look right there, look which leg's forward. The right front. Right front there forward, you go. Yep. left leg's back. That's going to make a difference in how the feet develop you know, with the low high, the low high situation. I'm trying to get your butt out of the picture here. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know. It's a family I, show, Mike. Family show. Right. But right there in the development of this baby, what what are the feet going to look like? How is this going to affect that? And if you end up with a low high situation, uh, you know, that, that right – that right leg will be a tendency to be the be the low side. That will the left will be more upright, correct? But, but yeah, but as of like just like humans, aren't there that will develop also affect the back end development. So just like humans, I mean, I'm right handed. Right. You know, I favor my right hand. Right. I'm right footed as well. Right. And I know I know if I ever have to take like steps like up a hill or something like that, I always put plant my right foot and push with my right foot to get my left foot up there. And then you know Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Um, this horse, I mean, is it technically going to be a right-sided horse? And now you've got to train. Possibly. And are, you, are we training a horse to be ambidextrous as to, like, Mike, you write with your right hand. I need you to write Have with you your Have you seen my writing? <laughs> I've seen your writing. So right I don't or, really write with either hand. Right or left hand. You use a chisel and stone or whatever. Right, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, here, here's the thing with, with, with horses if they're uneven in the front, they will be uneven in the back mm -hmm. to a similar degree. Now, depending on how straight or how curved they are, they can be more developed laterally or they can be more developed diagonally. And right now it appears this one is more developed diagonally. You know, we haven't set up perfect pictures, but just from what we got there. Right. And uh, so – you got a strong diagonal, weak diagonal, correct? Correct. Okay. If you got one that's set up laterally, you know, if you got a strong left shoulder, strong left hip, those horses typically their whole barrel is bent. And um, right. And the high low horses, you know, it's got a kind of a coin toss. If they're you know, if they're weak laterally, they will be, you know, they will be bent into the, the weak side and the whole barrel will kick out to the strong side. Uh, the diagonal ones will be a little straighter, but they're never the same. And also on your high low horses, if you look at the diagonal feet, that foot behind the upright foot in the, in the, you know, as far as your high low, typically the, the foot on the side of the up, the, the higher angle in the back end will sit lower. And, uh, which means you know that that diagonal will have a lower lower angle. The other diagonal will have a higher angle, and some of that is okay. Is that compressed because of the body stance, or is it 
because the diagonals the diagonals match each other more because I think in in shoeing horses or trimming horses, as far as getting them to trot out in a straight line, the race relationship from the diagonal foot is a lot of times to me more important than people look at left to right feet to compare them. But to me, the relationship between those diagonals, as far as how I'm thinking when I'm working on a horse's feet, is probably more important as far as getting perform- the horse perform the way it should. All right, guys, stick around. Uh, one more little segment, and we'll let you get back to enjoying your ponies. So stick around. You're listening to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. He'll be right back. Hello again from your South Carolina Horse Council. Did you know that the South Carolina Horse Council invests in programs that support education and equestrian activities for the young people of our state? The council awards numerous youth scholarships annually. We sponsor the state finals event for the South Carolina 4-H equine program. And we provide full event sponsorship for the year-end South Carolina Future Farmers of America horse evaluation program. We also sponsor the South Carolina Governor's School of Agriculture equine program. Our expo periodically brings education and entertainment to equine enthusiasts of all disciplines. Is law enforcement in your area educated on the special needs of equines? The South Carolina Animal Control Officer Seminar helps familiarize law enforcement and animal control officers with proper care of horses to better identify and investigate cases of neglect or abuse. For more information, visit schorsecouncil.com. Welcome back to Equine Dynamics with Mike Stein. If you like this podcast or perform out at your location, if you've got a special event going on, if you've got a barn full of people, uh, or if you just want to have some fun and have us come out there and be part of your event, we can do that as well. Uh, the way you do that is go to equinedynamics.com. At the top of the page, says clinics. Fill out that little form. Uh, we'll schedule you in. Let us know the date and time of when we can be there, and we'll be there with all the bells and whistles on. And my very own bell and whistle is Mike Stein. How are you? I'm doing good, Travis. How are you doing today, buddy? Doing all right. I'm not going in your pool. You not, should. I'm not going. You to, should. When are you expect to get all that fixed? By the way, it, I mean because that's it will be soon. Because I mean we have rain coming up, and, and your septic tank not to get you know too gross or anything. It's going to start filling up. And if we get you know any kind of well, the drain bed is working well. I mean okay. that thing didn't have anything in it. All right, but I mean it's still going to fill up. And and uh, do you but have to, it we we are we are we started mo- moving on getting things done soon as soon as it collapsed. Do you have a fence or some kind of barricade around it so like animals don't get trapped in there and, and end up you know? Yeah, we've we've put covers over it. Okay, so you got that under you got that under wraps, I guess. Right. <laughs> Pardon the pun on that. All right, guys, what did we learn today? Talking terminology. Uh, what do we mean when you hear the the term high or HL zone or the high laminar zone, Mike? Well, that's the distance between the dorsal hoof wall and the front of the coffin bone, and they're they're you know, knowing your measurements can can help you predict what has gone on and see some of what has gone on with the horses, the history of the horses the horses feet. And by by definition, it says a line draw perpendicular to the face of the P3 measured from the face of the P3 of the dorsal hoof capsule. Uh, The measurement made from the distal of the exterior process and the distal tip of the P3. Both proximal proximal and decimal or decimal uh, measurement should be the same. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for both of them to be the same all the way down. Right. And then another thing is, okay, if you take a rasp the foot you can make it appear even down, but then you will see a wall that actually narrows at the bottom. And that's not necessarily a good thing either. Think about a sheet of plywood and structural strength. If you're dressing it down, thin it down, thin it down, thin it down, and down at the bottom, you've got an eighth inch of plywood, and up the top, you got an inch, but you want that to be a structurally sound floor. What's going to happen? You're going to fall through in one point, right? End up in the pool. <laughs> End up exactly. That's what that's what that's what we've done for you to walk across the plywood, right? I'm not doing it. And also, deer corn. It's that time of year. So, is deer corn dangerous for horses or not? Deer corn is dangerous for horses. The horses can't read well enough to know that <laughs> on the bag where it says deer corn that's for deer only now let me let me let me add to that the deer corn itself is not bad for them to eat but if they eat a whole like anything excess is always well, bad you know I, i'd keep them out of that yeah. and and it's not just that this time of year it's the winter grass is coming in and anytime with any 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 form of laminitis uh prevention people want to know what to do prevent it you know 
watch your horse, get your weight tape out, pay attention to what they're eating. Um, hopefully, nobody has put you know a situation where your horse can have access to the deer to deer corn. Or watch how far it spreads or, out. And as far as that goes, you know, good latches on your feed room door in case the door, horse gets out so it won't get in the feed room because it's going to go after it. <laughs> it's like a big Because old... they're kind of like Travis when yeah. they go to Ryan's exactly. all you can eat buffet. Exactly. Uh, I didn't say that about you. Not, right. not where you could hear it. No, no, no. I, I, I've done the same thing, so okay. <laughs> and uh, also the mare and foal feeding could cause movement issues uh, in the future, and I'm gonna switch back over to camera six here. Oop, camera nine. Actually, I'm going to camera. What camera am I going to? Where are, Where am I? At? Oh, I'm right here. I didn't even click on it. There we go. So this is the a, a foal, and this could cause issues later on because the foal constantly eats using the left hand side of its body. Could be bending it in the wrong. It's going to be a boomerang horse. Boomerang. Yeah, throw it and come back to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way it, horses are in in utero, they they are bent. Um. Horses are right-handed and left-handed, just as we are. And then you start looking at overdevelopment and underdevelopment, and how is that going to relate to performance, long-term soundness, and, uh, you know, we want them to be happy and healthy, and horses should be retired because old age, not unsoundness. And uh, just a reminder, or just a thing that popped up, <clears throat> I um I just put down my Pasture Pro on the front pasture here. Right. I had weeds popping up, and I, they couldn't get down and get the grass. So I have to keep an eye on them, because now they're going to be able to get down there and get that grass. That If you don't have white tapes, I can give you white tapes. Got some in the truck. She's got like 15 of them hanging up in there somewhere. All right, guys, on that note, um, make sure you follow Mike Sign over on Facebook. Search Equine Dynamics Mike Sign. Make sure you like him over on YouTube. Uh, same channel as well. Mike Sign, Equine Dynamics with Mike Sign. If you have a question for Mike Sign, get it over to equinedynamics.com. And uh, if you'd like us to perform out at your uh, location, your event, if you got a special event coming up, uh, fall festivals, we're always in tune to come out to fall festivals if you like us to come out there we can do this podcast at your location just as you see it here on youtube as well uh, and you can get that over at the equinedynamics.com section on behalf of mike sign over there thank you have a good day with the ponies and uh come swimming over there soon travis before you got a chance <laughs> my name is travis saying see you next week Good night, Ned. Yeah. Good night, Ned. Good night. 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 Good night